was such a powerful prayer. Now, without wasting time, uh, I am going to introduce a man of God that has agreed to serve this week. A man of God who loves the Lord. You saw him yesterday. He spoke to us. Uh, we are so truly thankful for this man of God with us. Pastor Crispin Chesala, all the way from Zambia. He is a pastor in a district. For those that may not know Adventist structures, he pastors his district in the in the Midlands, that is West Zambia Conference. He is a husband of one daughter. They have one daughter. And uh, we are truly thankful to have you, Pastor, uh, to our place. I wish I had known how to greet you in your language. But what I'm going to ask is you come on. I'm going to ask all our Zambian brethren with us to please show us how we welcome the pastor in your Zambian languages so that we make him feel at home. But Pastor, feel at home. This is your time. Thank you for agreeing to serve May you now take uh, the time. Amen. 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 Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Valerie, for that very um, humble introduction. I'm so thankful. And uh, I'm so thankful for the, uh, for the prayers uh, that um, you have been offering. I did mention yesterday that uh, my voice is uh, not too well. I'm so thankful uh, for the prayers that the saints are offering. I can uh, testify that the Lord is uh, coming through. And uh, by the grace of God, I believe it shall be well. Uh, this morning, I am again excited to share with us on our theme that says um, created for good works. Created for good works. The scripture that we shared uh, yesterday is from the book of Ephesians chapter two and verse 10. Ephesians chapter two, verse 10, that's the scripture we shared from yesterday. And I did mention that uh, throughout this week, our presentations shall be anchored on that uh, scripture. And so before we can uh, do our devotion for this morning, I will ask that uh, you can join me in a word of prayer. Shall we pray together? Gracious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are so grateful for this opportunity, the opportunity that is so rare, in which, Lord, we can share the word of God and in which we can hear the word of God. I pray that as we begin to talk to one another this morning, through the written word of God, I pray that let your spirit, Father, come through to possess the signals world over that uh, for the next few minutes, Heavenly Father, you will be in charge of these signals that no one loses connection, but that, Lord, these things shall facilitate the preaching of your word. We thank you. Be with us now, Lord. Begin with us and end with us because we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. My dear brothers and sisters, uh, for this morning, as we look at created for good works, I wish to indicate that these works that we are talking about can only be discovered once you are in Christ Jesus. Yesterday we, emphasized the point that uh, we can only discover these uh, spirit, th these works that the Lord ordained for us only when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's only in Jesus that we are able to discover these works that the Lord has prepared for us. And I did mention that uh, these works are coming in the context of our salvation in Jesus Christ. Meaning that if you have not yet accessed that salvation that was given to us for free, that salvation that we access by faith, if you have not yet accessed that salvation, it becomes difficult for you to understand what we are talking about when we talk about these, uh, uh, these, these, these works. Now for this morning, I want to quickly mention that uh, these works that we were created for, the works that we only find in Christ Jesus, they are administered to us 
through the Holy Spirit. The Bible is very clear that the Holy Spirit is very active in helping a Christian discover what he or she was actually created for. And uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to use a few scriptures from the Bible to help us understand the idea on how critical the Holy Spirit is in this process of discovering uh, the works that the Lord has ordained for us. Allow me to read from the book, uh, First Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12, and I'm going to, I'm going to read verse seven and verse eight up to verse nine. The Bible says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, but one and the same spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. The idea that is coming to us from the word of God is that uh, the Holy Spirit is very active in distributing these spiritual works to everyone that has come to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit is very active and therefore it becomes critical that um, we need to pay attention to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. As we have come to Jesus Christ, we need to begin to pray that the Holy Spirit can begin to work in our lives. Because if the Holy Spirit is not active in our lives, it will be difficult for us to understand our purpose. This morning, I want to emphasize that without the Holy Spirit, my dear friends, we will never discover that which the Lord would want us to do for him. It is through the Spirit that we begin to understand these things. It is written in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, that when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power, power to be witnesses, power to be witnesses for God in Jerusalem, in Judea, and to the utmost parts of the world. Wherever you are, you can only become a faithful witness once you are connected to the power of the Holy Spirit. The Bible also tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, Ephesians chapter 4, reading verse 11, the Bible tells us, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. So we, we, we see that it is the Holy Spirit, it is the Holy Spirit that gives these abilities. To some, he gives to be apostles. To some, he gives to be prophets. To some, he gives to be evangelists. To some, he gives to be pastors. It is the Holy Spirit who gives. And as we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it is him that gives individually. So once you are in Christ Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes through and he will be able to impress upon you that which you must do in the work of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is able to give you ability to be able to perform a wonderful work that is intended to benefit all. And the Bible in, in Ephesians chapter four, not uh, on, on, on verse 12, it even gives us the purpose why the Holy Spirit gives these uh, spiritual abilities, these spiritual gifts, or these spiritual works to people. It is written in verse 12, that for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And you can see a connection between this verse and what we read 
in uh, First Corinthians. We saw that in First Corinthians chapter 12, these abilities are given for the benefit of all. And this language of benefiting everyone is the same language that we are finding in verse 12, where the Bible says that uh, these gifts are given for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Did you know, did you know, my dear friends, that uh, when you become uh, a Christian, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, did you know that the Lord gives you the ability to be able to equip the saints? The Lord gives you the ability to be of benefit to the body of Jesus Christ. The Lord will give you the ability to edify the church of God. So the spirit will empower you to be of service, not only to yourself, but also to the greater body of the Lord Jesus Christ. The spirit of God can do that. And in doing so, the spirit can open up different abilities within the body of Christ that are supposed to be of benefit to all those that are members of the church of Christ. And it tells us in verse 13 that um, this must happen till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. When I read this, I get excited. I get excited because I begin to understand that when I am in Christ, when I am in Jesus, I begin to understand that I have a responsibility to be of a blessing, to be of benefit to my neighbor and to my friend. So when you are in Christ, these works that you are created for, we begin to see from the word of God that they are intended for the benefit of others. They are intended for others to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. They are intended for others to come to this salvation that is offered free for all. So these works, therefore, have got no place for selfishness. These works will help us to be of service to others. That's why they are given. Now, we have seen that it is the Holy Spirit that is active in doing these things. It is the Holy Spirit that is active in helping us understand what we are. What does this mean? The implication of this is that we need every day to be praying for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We need to be praying every day that the Holy Spirit can come and work through us and upon us. We need to pray that the Holy Spirit shall come upon us in full measure. Because even the performance of these works that we were created for, the performance of these works cannot achieve their full performance if the Holy Spirit is absent. The Holy Spirit is very critical. And my prayer this morning, even as we begin to pray, is that we need to pray that the Holy Spirit must come upon us every morning. We must be asking for the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Every day, we must be asking for the infilling of the Holy Spirit because only the Holy Spirit will help us to be able to achieve these things. But before we end, there is something else about the Holy Spirit that I need to mention that shall prepare us 
for our presentation tomorrow. And this is coming from the book of Galatians. Now, the book of Galatians must be very familiar with most of us because that is where we find the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Allow me to read from the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. This scripture, it introduces us to what happens to a life that has allowed the Holy Spirit to control it. It is written, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. So when the Spirit has come and is working in you, there are certain qualities that begin to manifest themselves. These qualities include love. They include gentleness. They include patience. They include peace. These things come as a total package when the spirit is upon you. These things begin to show up. I have, I have heard a lot of requests where people will, will request and say, pray for me that I may be patient. And usually my response is instead of praying that you may be patient, I'll pray that you may receive the Holy Spirit. Because patience only comes when the Holy Spirit is in you. Faithfulness. A lot of our people today are struggling for faithfulness. Faithfulness has become a rare commodity. Faithfulness. It has become a rare commodity in corporate companies, in the church, and everywhere you go. Faithfulness. Everybody is talking about faithfulness. And uh, I have seen in the word of God that the solution to faithfulness is the Holy Spirit. Because when the Holy Spirit has come and he's upon you, the Bible says faithfulness comes along. These are fruits of the Spirit. And so this is why it becomes critical that we need to pray that the Holy Spirit can come upon us. Gentleness, goodness, kindness, all these things come through the Holy Spirit. And all these things are very important to that special work, to that special work that you must do for the Lord. These are very important. These qualities will help you to be able to perform your work in a way that is acceptable before the Lord. My prayer for all of us is that may the Lord fill us with the Holy Spirit. Wherever you are, may God fill you with the Holy Spirit in your individual life, in your family life, at your workplace. May God fill you with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is our need in times like this. And so on this note, I pray that may the Spirit be your portion. Please kindly join me in prayer as we close. Gracious Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the greatness of your love. Thank you, Lord, for the great miracles that you are doing. Thank you, Lord, for this platform that you have created by your own love, your own will, that men and women from different parts of this world can come together, be able to get the blessings that come from the word of God. I pray that now, Lord, may you help us. May you help us, Father, to be able to receive the Holy Spirit. May we keep praying that the Holy Spirit, Father, may be upon us. Give us power to be able to do the work that you have created us for. Thank you, Father, for listening to us and for blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.